G'day punters, welcome to a cracking edition of All In. We have a Cox Plate Manicato and the invitation covered this week. I am lucky, to be, lucky enough to be joined by Dean Watling and Salts. Dino, how are you, mate? Good, Gano. Good to jump on with you, lads. Sultan's on debut, so hopefully you can find us some value down in Melbourne. So it's great to have you on, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, mate. Good to be here and looking forward to Cox Plate weekend grand final for a lot of these horses. Absolutely, mate. Huge weekend of racing. Now, boys, you've both been on fire red hot. I think Salt is three from three today, so punters are just all over you at the moment, mate. Well done. Needed to come back, mate, after a downer a few weeks ago, but have so all as well. Good stuff, mate. So, look, just a quick recap uh, on last week. Dino steered, uh, steered you guys in to Daisy's at $11, which was huge. Another, another fill-up from Dino. He's on fire. I was lucky enough to jag big parade at sixes, so something for the battlers. And we're all over Nature Strip once it drew a wide barrier. Boys, just before we move on, I've got a question for you. Nature Strip or Incentivise, what was the best performance, Dino? Uh, I'd say Incentivise for sure. Margin, speed, good horse. Yeah, Incentivise, definitely. Outstanding. All right, boys, so we're, we're first... Uh, first meeting we're going to cover here. We're going to go to the Valley Friday night, Manicato Stakes. Rail will be in the true clear weather all week um, until Friday. They reckon maybe four to eight meals on Friday. It's probably worth monitoring. Uh, who knows? Gents, we'll get your thoughts on the tracks, um, Dean. Yeah, no huge opinion. Um, I guess if you're figuring out how Mooney Valley plays, you've got a crystal ball that can throw up any track. So I think uh, monitor it throughout the night. It can be that leaderish, or if that rain comes, they might come off the inside and, and run on. So um, I just play it as a fair track and then see what the night throws up for mine. Salts? Yeah, I've got some good words through today on, on what the track is, and it's currently good for, and with the rain that's coming this week, which isn't that much, that it's probably going to be that on the night. Worth noting that this meet last two years in a row has played on speed because they protect that inside, those inside lanes, from when they've come back for Cox Plate weekend because they've got to run 19 races in a row with the rail true. So they really protect that. So I, I would say it's advantage inside those seven lanes on speed. Uh, might have the same information there. I got a, a nice little text sort of leaning towards the same thing. So I uh, think we'll be looking at a bit of on speed there early. Now, look, Manicado, a bit going on there in the markets. When I sent this out to the boys, we were looking at Paulili at $3, now 350 Dino's chimed in, reckon that may not be going there. Ingratiating sevens. I know Salt has got an opinion on that. Um, fellas, what have we got here? So we've got Savat to Excel now into 450. Mask Crusader surely won't be going there. Eight dollars. Lombardo eight dollars. Jonka something one that I'm probably interested in there. Eleven. Uh, Dino. Yeah, like you said, there's hearing whispers that Palili might just go straight to the Coolmore. And we can say that with a market with. Like you mentioned, ingratiating has been 20s into around that um, $10 price. So that's a big stable push. And then you've got Mask Crusader, who's the second favourite. So if them two come out, there has to be value in this all-in marker in saying that. Um, I don't have a huge opinion. Um, I was sort of keen on Palili and hoping it went there. So I'll throw straight to Salt. So I've got no real push here. Yeah, I, I was thinking that Palili was taking up a bit much at the three. In grey shading, you mentioned Mick the and Dino, you said the money's come for that. I'm not sure if that measures up at, at Group 1 weight for age. I know it's a weaker race, but they got pants down the straight last start by the, by Kalos, so I can't see it measuring up to a horse like Sava 2XL. And he was outstanding. Prefs chased Dosh off a brilliant jump out, and Dosh was, had, a, had a nice weight swing on it and, it, and it nailed on the line, and Stable have said that They've aimed him right up for the Manicato, so he's going to be peaking second up on speed and tough as nails. He's the one that stands out for me. The other one's Kemal Passer, and he does look the overs. He's an on-pacer. He's a very honest horse. He carried 57 kilos in an Oakley plate and rocketed home. Gave his all last start in the Gil Guy hard in the market. I think he's ready to peak third up at 1,200 metres, and you can do worse than, than backing him at around 21 at the moment. Yeah, 21, 21 by six. So there's, there's a good push for your punters. I'll stay out of that. I was happy to back Paul Ely if it went around, but I uh, won't be steering you into that. Uh, boys, Cox Plate, what a cracking race. Before we move on, this is a question without notice. Uh, Favourite Cox Plate memory or victory, Dino? 
I was lucky enough to be there on Winx's fourth Cox plate. It was my first time seeing her in the flesh with a group of mates. So I've got videos and moments of that, and I think that will stick with me for life. Yeah, Winx versus Humidor for me and, and her pulling away. That was an epic battle. Wasn't that huge, mate? Absolutely. And Humidor, was not, nobody gave her any, right? So that was that was, nah, that was, that was sweet. Outstanding. All right, boys. So um, obviously, as Salt's touched on, nine or nine races. I think they'll have on the Friday night. Uh, if any rain does come, we'll see what happens there. But probably not much. Um, looking any anywhere from zero to three millimeters forecast. So every chance it doesn't rain at all. Um, at the moment, we have Zaki three dollars, J Mac, Animo four dollars, Craig Williams. Very elegant, eight dollars. Damien Lane, Gold Trip, ten dollars. D Oliver and State of Rest, ten dollars. J Allen, uh, Dino, what do you like? Uh, there's no real firm opinion uh, at the top of the order for mine, but I'm keen to have a little spec on Mawanga around that twenty-one dollar price. I can't believe you've got a horse like Probabil, who was outstanding. I do concede last start and a horse called Captive on in front of it in the market. I just can't see that. Um, Moanga was huge, two back at Flemington and the Maccabi Davies behind a centre vise, then was probably even bigger in a sneaky run, you might say, in the Epson, sat five wide, kept closing, and Tommy Rowe jumped off and said that was the best he's ever felt. Um, and I think it's a big push that Annabelle's missing the Golden Eagle to send this horse to the Cox Plate. You've got Hugh Bowman jumping on down there, and around that $21 odds early, I think that's the way I would play it. But... Um, no doubt um, the, the horse at the top of the market. They'll be coming to the forefront Saturday, but I just couldn't find any early value for mine. So, Zach, uh, sorry, Mawanga for me early. Yeah, I, I think the market's got this this pinpointed. I'm I'm fully expecting Zaki to bounce back. I'm, I'm certainly not interested in, in betting all in. And when he's, when he's a $3 favourite, I, I want to take in some other variables before I have a bet. But I think he'll... Certainly appreciate Mooney Valley more than at that hard surface at Caulfield. And yeah, I, before that last run, when he was rolled at a dollar twenty-eight, he was a superstar, and everyone thought he was. So you'd you'd be wanting to forgive a horse of his caliber, I think. What do you reckon? You get so you can get nearly maybe closer to four three eighty something come Saturday. Nah, I, I don't. I don't really have an opinion on, on what he's going to do. He might even tighten up from that three, but I'm just not... Okay. I just don't want to take it all in when I don't really need to. No, have a bigger not. Yeah, yeah all, you're not really want to be taking too many favourites in all-in markets. No, um, no. Boys, question for you. Animo, um, looking back, who have we had? We've had uh, So You Think, um, Seamus Award... Uh, and there's another three odds. Zabaville may be back in the early thousands. Um, from memory, they're all going forward to, for their wins. Um, as you see, the same with the Animo uh, this this weekend. Do you reckon they they have to ride in the in the top four to be winning hope? I don't think they have to. I think uh, he's adaptable, though. I think probably a lot of people might have him penned as a back marker just purely off his barriers and the way he's run this prep. But we saw in the size when he was deep into his prep um, as a two-year-old he was able to draw a good gate and sit a lot closer that was the, the dynamic win that sort of put his name up on the board where he, he put six of them um, eased down so I would say barrier depends on him um, I doubt they'll push the button from real out wide and, and try lead or anything like that I think they're riding where he's comfortable from the barrier that's that's my insult you see like that yeah, I, I I don't think first four, like if, if this is a, a fast run race, which they're expecting it is, and, and he's settling next to Zaki, I know who I'd want to be on, and that's Zaki. He's quite brilliant animo, so you don't want to take that finish away from him. Willow rode Castle Vecchio here and, and gave it an absolute peach down in the weights as a three-year-old, and he was getting back at that time. But I, I don't think first four, but, you know, you want to be forward and midfield to make most of that wide, of that uh, lightweight, don't you? Yeah, that's my thinking, lightweight, and especially how the track's playing. Look, I think he, he sat forward enough in the Golden Rose. Um, was it Golden Rose, his last row? Guineas. Guineas. Yeah, he Guineas, was sorry, prior to the Guineas, right? Was it the Golden Rose behind him in the Congo? Sat so forward enough there in that run. Um, we'll be yeah. to see how it goes anyway. For mine, for mine if, we, if we want to see it winning, it has to be at least in that first half of the field. All right, boys, uh, move on to Ramwick, the invitation. Um, how do we see the track playing? Eight metres, out eight metres from the 1,000 to the winning post. 
and we have five metres of remaining weather. There are forecast showers, four to 12 mil, but it was cracking day to day, 27, 28 degrees. Um, whatever moisture was in that uh, track would be well and truly gone by the end of today. Um, low to mid 20s all week. How do you see the track playing, Dana? Yeah, I think the Randwick tracks played outstanding the last couple of weeks. I think it played uh, outstanding on the weekend. I think the wind was just the factor that sort of uh, was a disadvantage for those coming wide and around that bend. Um, struggle to make ground. You want to be close to the rail, but that was no fault of the track. That was the wind. There is wind forecast um, for Saturday as well and out to the eight metres position from the true. I think, if anything, you want to be a little bit more handy when the rail goes out. Um, I think rail true. I think it's a very fair track. You sort of tick for midfield and back markers as well. You can probably back them with confidence, but rail out eight metres, I think you want to be a touch more forward in the run, but I'm just going to play it as fair like it's played the last couple of weeks. So that, that's my assessment. Yeah, a bit early to make a call. Um, you know, we can't get the red, they can't get the weather right in Sydney on <laughs> Saturday at 1 p.m. saying what's coming at 1.30. So who, who are we to talk about what it's going to be on Saturday from a Monday? But on, on the stuff I've got here, the, those rail positions six to nine metres uh, are often quite fair. So um, let, let's just hope for... For some of that. Absolutely. And we move on to the invitation. So we have Entrevier, $3. Tommy Berry It's actually been backed, so maybe a bit shorter than that now. Notice two fifty up and about there. That's probably in the space of a couple of hours. Ice bath around $8. Star Tontes, $8. Nudge, 11 Evangelic, 11 uh, Push into any of those, Dino? Uh, I was very keen on Triv, but like you said, you just mentioned the market's come straight into her the last couple of hours, um, been crunched and 250 all in. I don't think there's any value or any smarts in doing that. You'll probably get a better price come Saturday. Um, I mean, saying that if that rain forecast does come, I think Ice Bath was as brilliant as her two starts back, uh, recorded fastest last 400, last 200 of that on a dry track. If we do see this rain come, um, that $7 could turn into value. But early, I think the market's got a pretty spot on here. I don't think there's anything else deeper in the market I'd like to spec. I think Entrevier is clearly the best horse and the, the market's latched onto that. So nothing I'll take early here, but I'm keen on Entrevier results. Yeah, with the Entrevier versus ice bath, ice, ice bath thing, I think you know she was second up off a setback there as well. And I was watching that replay today and, and they sort of crossed the line together. But I think Entrevier has her covered. She's terribly hard to beat. Um, there's no way I'll be tipping against her. She was beaten by the barrier last start. What she did against the bias was simply outstanding. And, and the trial since starting up the inside in the same trial as Classic Legend yeah. was an absolute beauty. She's flying. And if she draws anywhere from three to seven, she'll win the race. Value might be in nudge. 11s for her. Her run in Melbourne last start was a beauty. Ridden ice cold. Home third fastest last 100 of the day. Prior to that 11-week let-up, she's runner-up to Tefane at level weights in a Group 1 Tats Tiara. So that's a leap form for this. And, hey, that's now incentivised form, isn't it, with them clutching in the Maccabi Diva. So uh, I think Nudge will, will probably shorten up from the 11s and you can maybe get a position on her. We did there, mate. Uh, definitely happy to take an each-way position on Nudge um, and definitely wait, obviously, with Dino on the Entrevue. That's uh, that's awesome. I think we've probably agreed on that one there, boys, so we can uh, hopefully all cheer them home together. Um, all right, Dino, give us a quick wrap-up of your early thoughts. doesn't have to be a tip. Anything you're looking forward to on Saturday or if you've got any races out wide, you usually do. Probably have a couple for us um, or horses to steer us into, mate. Yeah, I've got a couple of nice three-year-olds to steer us into. Uh, Ramwick, the Brian Crowley. Um, Abel Willie is currently $4. I think he'll start around that $3 and below price. Overpass this firm in the market. He's not going to that race. So there's some percentage to come out. I think uh, it's a very winnable race for Abel Willie. He was dominating first up in the Kenzo. I love what he did. Nash Sticks um, with no J-Mac there. So I think he's a very, very nice individual. And one down in Melbourne in the red anchor, Zarestro. This horse is also known for the Brian Crowley, but I'm hoping Waller sends it down south uh, from this race on Cox Plate Day, Group 3 for the three-year-olds. Trialing like a good horse, 1.9 lengths off Paul Ely as a two-year-old. had a long time off now, some very sharp trials. Doesn't look a deep field down there. I think this horse can do a similar what to... Uh, Mink's moment did a couple of weeks ago at Millie Valley and get the chocolates first up. So I'm very keen to back 
Abel Will in the Brian Crowley and Zarestro in the red anchor as long as it goes there. They're mine. A little early all in plays going on. Love it, mate. Sauce, what do you got for us? Yeah, I'm with you there on Abel Willie. Dino, what about that jump out between runs? I think he could have won it by 30 yeah. lengths had he let it go. <laughs> that's that's going to be prime this weekend. I thought, yeah, nothing really. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on that, whether in Sydney for Cepheus, so each trial like a jet between runs. He was on the heels of Think It Over last start at 2,000 metres. And look, he's worked through the line, suggested he's, he's ready for 2,400 metres. I think if it's a firm track, him and Zarek will swap around and, and see if this might start favourite. But I, I don't want to come into four bucks without knowing the surface yet. But worth keeping an eye on him when the final fields come out. Love that. Which shall be out Wednesday. So... Uh... Be ready to go there, punters, around 12, 1 o'clock on, on Wednesday for Cepheus. And, mate, I'm with, um, with Nudge each way um, for all the reasons why Salt said I'm nothing more to add. Uh, I think it's a great bet. And three, you're going to get three, four dollars a place. So cheer that home. All right, boys, uh, thank you so much for your time. It's been awesome catching up. Uh, Dino, can you let us know um, how all the viewers can access your tips, mate? Yeah, punters, jump on to the site. It's linked on all my Twitter, the Barry Attendant. You can use the code FREE50 to sign up for your first month free. Cancel any time and follow the feed on Twitter. I post a lot of uh, content and everything on there. So that's the way you can find me on the socials. No one's going to want to cancel, Dino. You're bloody flying, mate. I hope not. You never know. People people cancel at the best of times. When you've, you've <laughs> Lift, don't cancel. Dino's that. flying. Do not jump off the gravy train. Salts, mate, you do an amazing podcast um, with your mate Footy. Is that right? Footy, uh, two units podcast great, yeah. on a yeah. Thursday. It's mate, great listening. Punners, if you haven't got onto it yet, please go do it. Uh, Salts, please uh, let everyone know where you, they can access your uh, packages on the weekend as well, mate. Yeah, that's it, mate. Two Units Podcast. That's at Two Units Podcast on Twitter or twounitspodcast.com.au or iTunes, Spotify, everywhere you get that stuff. Um, New South Wales Metro for the theraceclub.com.au. Great up there. Go there and sign up and um, everything else on me Twitter feed, mate. Awesome, mate. Thank you so much, fellas. Thanks so much. Hope you're back. Plenty of winners. Appreciate your time. I'm sure the punters do. Punters, when you're out there, please chime in with a comment. As I said to you before, it's our oxygen. It's what keeps us going. It's bloody 8 o'clock on a Monday night. We're putting in the hard yards. So get in there, chime in, give Dino a spray for his moustache, as you usually do, and um, get around the show.